Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I've always been a fan of children, person of Chris here and uh, line of doing a bit of a guide on humans. Um, so, last time we looked at orcs, and that was a good deal of fun. We went through some basics, went through some lineups. Uh, and now we're going to look at humans who are sort of. Uh, They're the versatile equivalent to orcs. So, you know, traditionally you would get orcs and humans in the box set. They're good representations of two styles of play. Um, so, humans, why are they great? Well, they are incredibly versatile. Um, you need passing play? They do passing play. You need blocking play? Or running play? They got that too. Um, they got good movement, which is great. And ultimately, they're pretty straightforward. Okay. However, their skills are pretty average, which means that they're not the easiest to use effectively. They're a poor man's orc or a poor man's elf, right? In terms of running or, or, or passing. But they're good at both. So, um, and this isn't necessarily a weakness because, for example, dwarfs have this, but their strengths are very much based on their skills rather than stats. You're relying on rerolls to sort of help you through. Um, yeah, and like I said, they don't fit into an extreme niche of play. Goblin gambling um, are a great company to be Which tends to be quite with. good in Any this problems format. you may have are surely coincidental. You know. So, what do you have? Gambling. It's just uh, uh, that has nothing to do guys. with my uh, spontaneous endorsement. Right. No. So, yeah, humans. Pretty good for basic troops. 50k. Um, one more move than the orc equivalent. I think one less armor. So I think orcs are movement 5, armor value 9, humans are movement 6, army value 8. This means arguably you could have a lineman running the ball, that would be absolutely fine. Um, you know, for something that's potentially a passing team, the armor value is pretty good. Uh, are they all on 8? Yeah, apart from the ogre. 8 is fine. You need an above average roll to break that armor. So. Catches, uh, dodge and catch. So what that means is they re-roll when dodging. Uh, it also means that if you hit them with a take them down exclamation mark symbol, um, that it counts as a push. Okay, unless of course they have tackle, but you know, unless you're a fucking dwarf, that doesn't matter. Um, and they have catch, so they re-roll to catch, which can be you know really handy. Again, it's a re-roll without using a team re-roll, and that's significant. The more you, the more ways you can do that, the better. Um, and the throwers pass and sure hands. So this is great. They have a guy who can pick up the ball. Sorry, one more thing to mention. But it might only be strength two, movement eight. Movement eight is significant. These guys are like skinks, but better, basically. Um, but yeah, sure hands. They reroll to pick up the ball. And uh, pass. Um, they reroll on any sort of pass that they might want to do. So, yes, they're only agility three, but they reroll. So, you know, on a regular pass where you don't get a negative modifier, so it's a three plus to hit, um, it's, uh, you know, a one in nine of failure, which is not bad odds. Um, blitzers, slightly faster, movement seven. Um, the key for them is that they got block. Block makes them very difficult to take down. Obviously, if you can get these guys dodge, which is a double, but if you can get them dodge, they are just ridiculous to take down. Um, but you know, they're great blitzers. Um, they're great linemen. You know, um, and the fact that they block is nice. You know, they can step up to Saurus with one nice blocks. They all cast warriors. They have an advantage against other strength three, you know, characters that might not have block. So, 
Uh, and finally, of course, you've got the ogre. So this is another of our uh, high strength big guys. So bonehead, um, basically just a two plus all the time. Um, if this is very similar to wild animal, except it's slightly less shit. Um, or uh, really stupid, you know. Basically, two plus, or um, they can't do what you want them to do. They do a mighty blow, which is brilliant. Uh, thick skull, so this just makes it more difficult Spike to magazine. knock them out. So if you break their armor back, it means that they have to roll a nine or higher to remove the ogre from the um, table. And that may not feel significant, but actually it makes quite a difference. It, it's why dwarves are quite a tricky team to deal with. They can throw a teammate, not that that really matters in this, but if you took like a goblin who was a star player, you might have that. And of course, finally, my big problem with big guys is Lona. <coughs> Makes it difficult to reroll with them, so this is the guy who acts last every single turn, in my opinion. But they're a good lineman, if, even if you just sit them there, they have to be dealt with. And in some ways that can be how you can use an ogre effectively in a human team. Like, human teams are one of the few teams I'd probably consider using the big guy for. Um, Rerolls are really cheap, 50k, which is fantastic. So, let's uh, delete. Okay, so, just check. So our first build. So this is a bit of a all of everything build. So this this sort of gives you everything that you could hope for while still having three rerolls. Um, this is sort of the true versatility, right? So you've got uh, you could uh, flip this if you wanted. So you could have like four catches instead of four blitzes, you know, both would work. You know? But it's my thoughts here is, um, magazine, if you've got the ogre, uh, why not take four blockers Rimmel as well? Actually um, sport and would rather play with so, in this build I take one throw, you don't really need two ball carriers. A lot of the time, there are some exceptions to this, but generally with a lot of teams you can get away with one. It's your catches who you need to have multiple, multiple uh, people, generally. Um, three linemen, just because um, cost and two catches. So this gives you a really good opening setup. You've purchased the more expensive troops first while still allowing yourself to have a decent amount of um, passing play and uh, a lot of physical presence. So this team hits hard and, you know, will probably run the ball, but you could also, like your catches should be positioning themselves so that if your cage gets bogged down, your ball carrier has an avenue to um, exploit, which may, which is why humans are so tricky because they you know hit, but unlike say you know orcs that might struggle to catch the ball, um, you know they're de 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 dedicated catches. The downside is that you've got players with strength two, which makes you slightly less effective in your blocking, but you know it's up to you. Um, I would generally have both. I wouldn't dedicate one or the other. I think I think going full with this team as describing the weaknesses is not generally worth this it. But obviously happens. you might over emphasize on weaknesses or something like that more than I wouldn't like to rather the than uh, catches. As that has so build two, build achiever. Um, this has two throws. Um, Four blitzes, four catches, and alignment. Now you could um, duck out one thrower, save yourself 20k, pop that into like alignment, get yourself, you know, basically means that your first game you're guaranteed an apothecary or, you know, whatever. Um, but I quite like this. This is the passing team. You've still got four, four blitzes. You don't have the ogre, so you don't have your big guy. Um, but this is like, this is your skill set team. So you've got four catches, they will flood your opponent's um, sort of uh, end zone. Your thrower will set up for a you know, quick or short pass if they can. 
your blockers will keep your blitzers will keep your um, your opponents off your ball carrier. Um, three rerolls, you know, pretty good. And finally, I'll build C. So this is my obligatory two rerolls for the memes. For those of you who want to risk it for a biscuit. Um, so this has the best of the previous two with the problem of not having a third reroll. Now, there are some arguments here for taking this because the Ogre is more expensive than a third reroll. Um, and it is only 100k. This is like one of the teams where I could probably see this being an effective opening build. I, I certainly wouldn't look down on this list if it came up against me as a new team. Um, one thrower, you know, bare minimum, or you can kind of afford with the four blitzers, four catchers, um, ogre and alignment. So here you have a team that does, you know, the best of both. It's really got, I say the best of both. It does a decent job at both. It's got catchers who can flood the end zone, blitzers who can defend your ball carrier, it's got an ogre to act as a big fucking distraction. Which build would I take? Strangely, I, I do think this might be the strongest one. I would personally take build B, um, but that's just down to my playstyle. Uh, I think that because it's it's skill intensive, and having been a dwarf player for so long, so, uh, like I prefer a skill set team than I do a strength set. I also like three. I'm a bit superstitious about that. So this team I, I, is probably the best one. That would be my opinion. Um, you know. So yeah, relatively quick, much quicker than my previous one. I'm, I'll, I'll quickly show you They've got the, so many uh, what I would do as, a, as an offensive setup. Let's go against build B. And we'll go build C, because then I can kind of show you a couple of things. Quick match. Actually, four minutes. Ready to oh. play? So. <clears throat> Welcome back, Blood Bowl. So the defense is largely the same as in the previous video, so that arrowhead formation. Um, right, offense depends on, I've got one throw, so it depends on whether or not you are running or, or if you are catching. So I'll show you what a runner would be and then I'll show you uh, a passing strat. So we want, oh, let's catch it. So we're gonna we're gonna tie up. So this would be let's say we do all right. So if we're gonna do a running play, let's rather than doing a side cage play, we will do a central play. So. Catcher in there. So there's my cage set up. Um, I'll probably afford to put him there because then he blocks both guys up. And then, uh, so we've got our thrower going back. I have this guy here. So he's off the line of scrimmage just in case they get a perfect defense. Uh, I've got Blitzer. He's going to go there. That guy's a catcher. Pop him. They haven't got frenzy, so I'll pop them there. So, aggressive setup, covered against the blitz. I've got a cage setup. Throw if I need to do anything special. Um, and uh, I've got a cage ready. So, let's. Oh, where's this guy? Catcher. And that guy's a catcher? Okay, so let's. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I want that to be my cage. 
Cool. So this is if I'm being really aggressive and I want to get my cage up like early. So what's that? Uh, cool. So he's going to act last, but he's only tying guys up, so that's not a problem. Um, so this guy's going to block here for the two dice block. I'm gonna, that's fine. I'm not going to follow. Now I'm probably going to blitz there, and the reason is because I'm going to act him to hit him last. Um, this is Blitzer, Lineman, Blitzer, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is just family in there. Uh, right. That's a catch. Cool. So I can do some interesting things with this. First off, let's, or firstly, let's. Uh, Bless that guy off. They're getting up close and personal. That's good. They need to be uh, let's. Oh, I'm gonna just follow. I'm gonna follow. Yeah, it's just. Let's do this. Now I could have moved him left to keep him next to the ogre, but um, I kind of feel fine with that. I think this guy. I'm gonna do that. Kind of gives me a bit of space. Uh, this guy is gonna step. Forward. I'm going to keep the cage there for now. What you don't want is you don't want players stood up next to your guys because that's called what, what we call an impacted cage. So if he was next to him and he you put like a guy there to nullify him and then a guy here to get plus one, you can block this guy off the cage and then you can blitz in on the ball carrier. All right? So you don't want to do that. So... Risky play, but we're going to give it a go. Yeah. I would have gone for them as lot well. to do. Right. Yeah, so, short pass. 50%. I was to do that. Quick pass. 83%. I can re-roll that and then that gets a re-roll. So yeah, we'll do this. That might fail. But hopefully it works so I can show what I do. So, ideally it would have gone close to him because then I could just get it, go there and pass to this guy. But it didn't work. So, this guy's going to come to here. And uh, he's gonna hand off. Okay. So I've got my cage set up. Um, this guy is gonna go and just tie up a guy. Oh shit, I ran out of time. Okay, well, what I would have done is I would have sent this guy up here with dodge, or I'd done a few other things. But that's basically first turn. Uh, and as you can see, you know. That's a nice place to start, and I've got guys creating a bit of a screen. Uh, let's concede now. Shit. Okay, so. Looks like so. One last one. Hey sweetie, are you right to do it this time? Because I'm, I'm streaming, but I'll do the next one. I know, I'll do the next one, sorry. I, I will, I promise I will. Okay, so. Um, we'll just do that one more time. It's time to put all that Whoops. training and knowledge right. to the test. So, now we'll just show you some passive blocking, guys. that you could do. This is a bit aggressive, I don't know if it would work very well on humans, but it would certainly work on elves. Okay. Okay. Right. Well. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up for a... Um, what we call a flood. So a flood is where you is that a blitzer? Things there. There's a couple of dodges. So 
So really I want to do this. Let's have let's have Okay. Okay. Okay, so I've got my blitz defended against. I've got my flood. Yeah, it feels alright. Maybe he goes one back just to stop the um, perfect defense. So, again, rely on the ball carrier. If you had two, obviously you could pop one there and one there. That makes it a bit safer. That's a reason for taking two. this guy out. That's fine, that's good. And then what we do is we flip this out now. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So I want to get my guys eight away from the um, pitch, from their touchdown zone. Why do you ask? Because what I really want to do is I want to um, I want to score, and this offers me a way to do that. Because if I can pass to it and catch, that's a turn two score. So why is that my let's shit? All right, fine. Well, that's annoying. Uh, so, I'm displayed slightly, but that's fine, because I have a plan. Uh, let's go. Alright, so we'll blitz with that instead. Uh, these guys, so he's going to... What I'm doing is just send on my defense. I want some pawn. I'm going to try and pick up the wall. Well done. Cool. Ball now. Clear and fuck up. So I'm not passing the first turn because that's not the aim here. Right. I would have done this with the blocker, but I'm a moron, so you'll have to forgive me. Two dust block. Hopefully, I take him down. This player. Likes to be well in a fight. Put him there just so that he's only in contact with one. Okay. And then I'm gonna pop him here. So what I'm forcing to do, I've got now got a load of people in his end zone. And he's gotta sort of like choose because one, two, three, four, five, six. That's two go for his first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so now I can pass a load of guys if I need to. I've done those. Uh, this guy's going to go on that guy. Where's he going to that guy? With that guy, I can block that guy out. So I'm going to do this. Even though it's only two dice. That's fine. I'll push him to there. I'll follow. And I'm going to do that. Okay. Uh, I'll show you the return because hopefully then I can show you a score. Now, a normal player would probably try and mark as many of these as they can, but they're probably only going to get one. And I might be able to blitz, like, you know, a player off, something like that. Well, this just give me options and next, and I can get these guys in the side cage on the side if I don't have options to pass. 
the side cage is when you have a cage but against the edge of the pitch. So you half the number of people you need to defend your ball carrier. Gathering around that That's fine. Set, like halflings round the sandwich. The strength of a bear. Unfortunately, fighting skills of a field bow. So they're creating this big line, but that's fine because I'm really not worried about that. That's not my that's not my game plan here. Okay. So the first thing you always do is turn the ghost up. Nah. It's annoying, but I think he's moving. That's why you don't take him. I'm not wasting a reroll on him. Right, so. Okay. Uh, let's. I'm going to do that. Is that a two dice? Okay, so I'm going to use this guy. The reason I'm doing that is because I can push him left. Didn't have block, but that should be okay. I only need a push, that's fine. I'll follow. Now I'm focused on scoring here, so I'm not going to hit him just yet. This guy's now free, and as you can see, I need one to on, um, go for it in order to do it. So, if I go there. Okay. So, let's create a cage. I mean, that guy can get round, but that's not really the end of the world. Um, because... I on my cage slightly, but that's fine. In which case... Let's see if, it's if this fails, it's not the end of the world, but... There you go. So, we've got a guy. And now it's just a quick sprint to the end. I didn't even need to reroll. And that's how you do it. That's a pass and play with the Cuban team. Now, granted, that was AI. Um, these would probably be more closely marked. But you have that versatility, you're forcing them to spread out their defense to mark individual players. And if you can get a decent blitz, you know, on one of your catches to get a reroll, well, there you go. That's what we need. Well done, AI. You win the game. You have won the game. Riddles. And that is. Um, humans. So how do I feel about humans? I think they're really interesting. Do I think that they're incredibly strong? No. Um, would I... <sighs> would I take them to a tournament? Probably not to come in first place. Like, if I want to do passing play like I just did, why would I not take wood elves? If I wanted to do a uh, bashing play, why wouldn't I take orcs or dwarves or chaos? You know, um, I think that's my only issue with humans is that they can do a lot of things, but every other team can do something they can do better. Having said that, they can do everything. And that uh, is my conclusion. Humans are definitely a great team and you should totally play with them if you want to learn about the greater strategies of the game beyond your own preferred tactics um, and they can win you tournaments but you need to be well versed in all strategies uh, to fully master the human team this is Pyrrhus Tati Bias.